Hey everybody and welcome to our beginner series for iOS, Apple's mobile operating system for iPhone and iPad. If you're new to the electronic armory, we have tutorials on all things electronics, from native mobile development, software engineering, electrical engineering, and everything else to arm yourself in the digital world. Be sure to check us out at electronicarmory.com, hit us up on Facebook, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great tutorials on all things electronic. In this video we're going to introduce you to the Swift programming language an open source language developed by Apple for creating iOS apps. It's not just a language for building iOS apps, many have adopted Swift to be used in other areas such as web servers. Swift takes a lot of the best characteristics from all the great languages and combines them into a rich and expressive language that allows you a lot of the low level abilities of C, the protection of Java, with little to no compromise. After this video you'll be able to create a basic application in Swift. In future videos, we'll show you how to create more complex applications and eventually fully featured iOS applications. The best way to learn Swift is actually doing it by creating a real, albeit trivial, application. We'll start off with a simple interest finance calculator. So let's get started. After starting Xcode, you should see this window. We're going to use Xcode's playground feature to develop our quick finance application. So to start off, select the get started with a playground. We're gonna name this playground finance app. And the platform doesn't really matter. We can select iOS, OS X, tvOS, but since our interest right now is in iOS apps in the future, we'll just select iOS, but for this it doesn't really matter. Go ahead and select a folder to save it into. I'm going to select my Swift folder and hit Create. All right, and here's our playground that Xcode created for us. As you see at the top, we have this comment that says playground a noun, a place where people can play. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to play around with Swift a little bit, show you some of the features, and again, build an application that calculates some basic interest for us. On the second line, we have an import statement. This is going to import the UI kit. This is a package that contains some of the iOS elements, namely the user interface. However, we won't need those things, and so to import a little bit fewer things, we'll, we'll double click on this and type in foundation. And you can see our autocomplete already popped up for us. So I'm going to select foundation. Foundation holds our foundational elements such as collections, objects, and lower level elements that we'll be needing for our application, but not more than that. In our final line, we have var str equals, and then a string, hello, playground. This is a string assignment to a variable called str, and that's declared with the var keyword. Now you may have noticed on the right hand side we have hello playground. This is the result of this statement. So our string is being assigned to our str variable and the result of that is clearly hello playground. Okay, so we're going to delete this for right now because this has nothing to do with our finance app. And what we need instead is a few variables to define our interest formula. It's defined by our account value v and that's going to be equal to our principal times one plus the interest value. And so for example, our account value, and let's say we have $100 in there, multiplied by one plus, and let's say 8% or 0.08%, which really just equates to 1.08%. And that whole thing is of course equal to $108. Okay, and so I put these in comments so our playground won't actually execute any of this code. Not that it's real code, but you get the idea. And so this is one of the methods I like to do when programming is if I have a little bit more complex calculations or algorithms that I want to implement, I'll put the basic maybe pseudocode in a comment or the different steps that I need to take in code. And I'll put that in a comment and that way as I'm working through my code, I can implement the comment or pseudocode and it just gives me a very clear picture of what I'm trying to do. So if you look at that first line in the comment, we have a couple variables here, v, p, and i. And so we need to declare that in our code. So let's do that now. So our account value, our principal, this is the money that we have initially in our account, and our interest rate. All right, and our playground is going to complain about these variables because they are undeclared. They have to be set to something. And so let's set these to initial values. Uh, let's say our principal is 100 and our interest rate is 1.08. All right, now on the output on our right-hand side, you can see the results of these assignments. And they're just the assignments themselves, so no big deal. And now let's implement our actual equation.
And if you wait a couple seconds, the playground will compile your code and then run it. And what it'll do is if it encounters an error, is it'll pop up this little red stop sign on the left hand gutter. If you click on this stop sign, it'll give you the error message of why it stopped. If we expand this out, you can read the error message a little bit better. And it's saying it cannot convert the value of type double to expected argument of type int. So what does that mean? Well, we haven't declared any variables, double or integers at this moment, but Xcode has done that for us. Swift is a strongly typed language, even though at this point looks very similar to JavaScript where we're just declaring variables of any sort and then having Swift and Xcode handle that for us. But these are what are called implicit types. What Xcode is complaining about is that account value is an integer, namely zero. Principal is an integer, namely 100. But interest rate is a double floating point variable. Swift will not let you do this conversion because it doesn't really know how to convert the multiplication of an integer and a double back to an integer. This behavior is really undefined and a lot of languages will just do it for you. They'll do the calculation, truncate any values after the decimal point, and then assign that back to the integer. Swift doesn't let you get away with this because that's just bad code and very, very error prone. So how do we fix this? There's a couple ways of solving that, but the easiest one is just to make all three variables of type double. We can stick with the implicit method and just declare these as doubles by adding a point zero to the end of these. Now, because these are declared as doubles, implicitly, when you multiply two doubles together, you get a double. Now you can see the result on the right hand side here is what we expected. Okay, but adding point zero to everything might be a little annoying. So let's do this a little bit more explicitly. Delete the point zero. And after our variable for account value, colon double, and do the same thing for our principal variable. And again, because this is implicitly declared as a double, all three become doubles. But let's be a little bit more concise with our code and add double to this one. Okay, so far so good. The next thing I wanna talk about with variables is the declaration of variables themselves. Right now we're using the keyword var, and this allows us to mutate or change the variable. So for example, our account value here is set to zero, and then we're reassigning account value down on this line, and that result is becoming 108. But our initial values for principal and interest rate, they never change. And so a better way of declaring this to be a little bit more optimized is to change var into let. Okay, so again, because principal and interest rate don't change, we can make these let variables, which essentially makes them constants. Now, everything looks like it ran fine. If we go up to account value and change this to let, hit escape to get rid of the autocomplete, Playground will run our code, but it gives us an error. So if I click on this error here, It'll say cannot assign to value, account value is a let constant. But Xcode also gives us this nice little fix it pop-up. Says change let to var to make it mutable. Mutable is another word for change. So yes, let's make this mutable so that we can reassign a value to it. So double click on the fix it solution and Xcode automatically changes your variable back to var. As a general rule, I like to declare almost all my variables with the keyword let. Again, this is a little bit more efficient method of declaring your variables. They don't take as much memory, they're a little bit faster, and there's a couple other low-level reasons why you want to do this. A high-level reason is because if you really don't want somebody to edit your variables or mutate them later on in your code, Xcode will throw an error. That'll let you know that you're changing something that should not be changed. All right, and that's basic variable decoration in Swift. Let's move on to if statements. For this financial application that we're building, we want to make sure that our principal is not less than zero. If somebody's bank account has less than zero dollars in it, you don't want to give them any interest or even calculate interest because it'll actually take away from their principal or the amount that they have in their bank account. So let's do a simple check to make sure our principal is greater than zero. And if so, add the interest amount to our account value. So we start off, let's make a new line here and type in if parentheses, and we're going to check our principal value is greater than zero. And if so, we start a curly brace. I'm gonna hit the right arrow to go to the next line, hit tab to indent that, command right arrow to go to the end of the line, hit enter, and end curly brace. Okay, and you can see on the right hand side, our output in our playground is still 108. Now let's mess around with these numbers a little bit to see what values we can come up with. So change 1.08, to let's say 1.75, wait a second, and you'll get some new values here. Okay, so far so good, but what if you wanted to let the user know in a nice sentence how much money they have in their account? So after our if statement, go down below, create a new line, 
and we're going to use the print function to print out our results. So as you're typing in print, this autocomplete will come up. Simply just hit enter on that first item. Now Xcode will put a placeholder called items, and as you start to type, it'll replace that with what you're typing in. Notice Xcode is also complaining about an exception. Don't worry about that right now. Instead, we're gonna hit double quotes and type in a nice sentence letting the user know how much money they have. And hit the backspace key. So when we put our variable in, we enclose it in parentheses. And then we include the variable inside of those parentheses. Okay, and so once you do that and the playground compiles and runs your code, you see on the right-hand side, we have the value. Now this is really nice because you can put all sorts of messaging in here and mix and match variables inside your string without having to jump through a lot of hoops by ending your quotation marks, typing in a plus sign, your variable, plus sign, double quotes. And if you're mixing double quotes and single quotes, barely read what your message is supposed to say. But in this case, we can type a nice long message with our variables embedded within our string and it makes it very readable. So for example, Okay, and now you can see everything with a backslash and in parentheses is going to be replaced by that variable value, but the string itself is still very readable. Now, because my string is a little bit longer than the output on the right-hand side here, what I can do is I can actually expand that out with this I, this is kind of a quick look, or I can hit the plus sign to add that value below the line of code. This is really helpful because I can see the string right there below the actual line of code. And now that I'm looking at it, I can see that I've missed a dollar sign next to my 100. So let me add that now. Give that a second, reload it, and there it is. So this is a great way to check your code and debug it at the same time without having to go through breakpoints, stepping over code, that sort of thing. Moving on with our example app, what if another year passes and I want to recalculate this value? Well, I'm going to have to copy and paste account value equals principal times interest rate. But as any good programmer knows, we never like to repeat code. So anytime we have a repeated code, that's a great candidate for a function. So let's wrap our if statement in a function that we can call multiple times to calculate our account value. So I'm going to clear some space here. And to declare a function, we use the keyword FUNC. When Xcode brings up this autocomplete, hit the enter key, and Xcode will generate some placeholders and the function syntax. So you never have to remember what this function syntax looks like off the top of your head. These placeholders can be cycled through using the control forward slash key. So holding down the control key and hitting the forward slash will cycle through all these placeholders. I have name currently selected. I'm going to type in calculate interest. And that's going to be our function name. Our function is going to accept a few parameters. And where it says parameters, that's where we're going to put our parameter list. So again, control forward slash will select that placeholder. And we're going to want to pass in the principal and interest amount. and then use those to calculate our account value. So control forward slash, so this is a double. Now we're passing in principal and interest as parameters, but the ones that we've declared in our function declaration are local to our function itself. So our function doesn't actually know what type they are. So we have to explicitly declare those. Okay, so once we've declared those, hit control forward slash to cycle to the next placeholder. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete this by hitting the backspace key. And I'm going to go down here and copy this out, command X to cut it, and paste that up here. You can see the difference between local variables and global variables because our global variables are highlighted in green, our local variables are colored in black. So this should be a good indication that you're, you're mixing different variables. We want to keep all local variables because we don't want this function to edit anything that's global. And the reason why this one is global, and if we highlight it, it actually shows us what it's referring to and not this one, is because I named it a different name. So let's copy this, paste that down there, and instead of account value, we're actually going to just return this. All right, so our calculate interest function is taking the principal, multiplying by the interest, and giving us a new account value, which is then returning. And that return type is a double. So double multiplied by a double gives us another double. And so everything works out. We're just missing one more thing. If principal is not greater than zero, namely zero or a negative number, then our function doesn't return anything. And that's a problem. And that's what this error message right here means. So it's missing a return type and a function expected to return a double. So let's go ahead and fix that by placing an else clause in here. 
Now that we've made all these changes and Xcode finally has some good code to execute on, our message at the bottom says, after a year, you have $0. You started with 100 and made 1.075 on your money, but why is my account value now zero? Well, we have a bug. Our bug is that we never called calculate interest to calculate the interest on our account value. So again, this is why Playgrounds is a really, really powerful tool when you're trying to figure out really complex algorithms. To fix this, all we have to do is call the calculate interest function. We can do that after the declaration and assign the value to account value from calculate interest. So after hitting enter on the code completion, Xcode gives us two placeholders principal, which should be a double, and interest, which should be a double. We can, again, cycle through those control forward slash. We're going to enter in principal, and we just have that as a variable, so we're going to enter in principal, hit enter, and then control forward slash, and type in our interest rate variable. Right, you'll notice when we filled in those two parameters, Xcode did not remove the name interest from our parameter. The placeholder for principal, on the other hand, got rid of everything. This is what we call a name parameter. It's thus named so you know exactly what to put in there. With older languages like C, you might have a six parameter function and how are you supposed to know which order your parameters go in? With Swift and likewise with Objective-C, you name each one of your parameters and so as you're coding, you know exactly which order they should be because they're named. And so this is great. And now that we've called this function and assigned its return value to the account value, our account value in our string that we've printed out at the very end now says the appropriate amount. You have $107.50. All right, we're almost done with our finance app. We could stop here, but interest is actually calculated monthly, or as we call it, compounded monthly. And so this doesn't actually take in account the fact that you get interest on a monthly basis, and then you make interest on that interest every single month. Now, there's an easier formula for calculating interest. As an exercise, try implementing the actual formula that you see here on the screen. You'll need the power function to handle the power of n times t, which is the number of time interest is compounded per year, and t is the number of years that it's actually in the account for. The answer in the finished source code will be linked to below. But make sure you try to figure it out yourself first, and that way it'll give you a great understanding of how to play around with Swift. All right, and that'll conclude part one of our Swift tutorial. In the next video, we'll go a little bit more in-depth with Swift, and we'll save some of the more complex items in the Swift programming language for when we actually build our iOS applications out. So all the complex Swift features, such as classes, tuples, etc., we'll get to those when we start building out our iOS application. Also, make sure you subscribe to get notified of the next video, whether it's native mobile development, game development, electrical engineering, or anything else to arm yourself in the digital world. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.